Uh, what's up guys? Welcome back for the Energy Lab One Key. So a few things here you want to make sure that you familiarize and are comfortable with these equations right here. You got those written down in your notes or something like that. Um, and then let's take a look at what we did here. So you find the mass of the two balls you were using, whatever it was. And then uh, the next thing you had to do was determine the amount of potential energy they had at, at a height of two meters. So you take the mass, like here's the mass for the golf ball. You put it in here times acceleration due to gravity and then times the height of two meters. So you get an answer here of, of however much potential energy there is. So most kids did that part correctly. Some kids just use the mass, which would be very incorrect if you did that. And then what kind of potential energy? They have gravitational potential energy. So that's a key thing. You want to make sure that, that's, that you understand they have gravitational potential energy. The other two types of potential energy we talked about, and you've got notes from So some kids are putting electrical potential energy and nuclear stuff like that. So I would want you to understand that chemical and elastic would be the other types of potential energy we're looking for here. Um, so then here, what happened with number five, so let me just make some space here. How much kinetic energy should the balls have just before they hit the floor? The same amount of potential energy they started with. So some kids said that, which was great. Other kids just took these answers and they copied and pasted these. So um, if I did this, let's say I do copy, and I go down here and I say paste. The only difference is what I would do is golf ball would have this, tennis ball would be this, and then one change I've got to make on here, I apologize about this, the unit for energy is joules. So we want to make sure we have joules in there. I had copied and pasted another uh, one of the one of your data in here so we want to change those to joules um, so these would just be the same whatever amount of kinetic energy at the bottom is going to equal the potential at the top and then here you bounced it and so a couple mistakes and we talked about this in class I think yesterday or, or Monday but some kids change their unit from meters to inches or whatever and, and didn't convert that back so that's really important that you're using meters here for your heights. And then you um, calculate how much potential energy there is. And um, again, by uh, using the formula of potential energy equals M times G times H. And again, the unit here, joules. So we get those, and then we compare, and we look at, so here now our golf ball has 0.72, so we've got that as the after, and then we took before from what we had calculated up above here in answer number two. So we got our before and after, and like we talked about in class, the after always, every situation is going to be less than the before. If you got something different for that, then you did it incorrectly. So I had some kids here, like the, the ball was bouncing to a height of above two meters, which is, there's no way that that happened. So um, anyways, that's how you want to be sure that you did your data correctly, because if you did your data wrong, it's going to mess up your understanding and, and everything else. So here, change in potential energy. So the energy for the ball was not conserved. But the total energy in the entire universe is definitely conserved because energy is, is not gained or lost. It just changes forms. So where could that energy have gone? So we talked about in class that energy uh, most likely transferred to the floor, made the floor move, vibrate, um, or uh, sound energy was given off. So those were the most common answers there. Um, now here with these last ones, so how much work did you have to do to get to the ball to, the, to a height of two meters? So the work that you did equals the amount of energy that the ball gained. So just like before I had copied and pasted, 
So for the golf ball, if I knew how much potential energy it had at the beginning, I know how much work I did. So that is a quantifiable answer here. It is not a um, not much or I just had to reach above my head type answer. That is, that's the complete wrong context that you're interpreting this word work right here. So physics context of work is very different from just was this easy or hard to do. And so here if I had to raise it to a height of one meter, so lower than the two meters I did, then that, that would be less work. Uh, work is force times distance, so if the distance is lower, then that's less work for me to do. And then here, how does the amount of work equate to the amount of potential energy? It's the same. And how does that amount of work compare to the kinetic energy? That's the same as well. So you want to make sure you remember key concept was that work equals the initial initial potential energy, which equals the kinetic energy at the end. So that concept of energy changing from uh, the work you do, you put input that energy to the potential energy the ball has to the kinetic energy it has at the bottom. That transfer is, is key for your understanding, just like the conservation of energy is. So those two big things that came out of this.